right. Now tell me this. We talked about the anti-settlement law earlier in the term when we were into the Texas Revolution. Does that relate to what we're talking about now? Yes, that's it exactly. The majority didn't agree with the rulers, and they were justified. Bernie, what do you think? Oh, I think, uh... I think I don't remember what the anti-settlement law was. <laughs> Larry. It was a law disputed in 1830, when the Mexican government tried to stop more settlement, and the Texans wouldn't stop. Led to a whole lot of fighting. Do they have the right to refuse? After all, it was a law. Yeah, that's right, it was a law. Well, so what? It was a bad law. Oh, so you think if a law is bad, you can disobey it, huh? Right. Hey, man, wake up. Mr. Dixon? Charlie. They didn't think, they knew. The Texans proved it. Sure did, they won the revolution, didn't they? A little late, aren't you, Jason? That's what I kept telling Mr. Casey, but he didn't pay no attention. Well, if he had to go to the vice principal's office, must have been some reason. Yeah, he thought it was one. Okay, where were we? Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> oh, Pam, you said that the early settlers proved that it was a bad law by winning. Does that mean that if they had lost, it would have been a good law? Oh, thank you. Charlie, Mr. Casey wants to see you. Right now? That's what it says. Larry, you had your hand up? <laughs> Larry. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. I'm sorry I was late today, Mr. Dixon. Well, I have to admit, you did spend a long time in Mr. Casey's office. Can I help? Yeah, you can help me catch a fiend. Somebody told Casey I was in a chemistry lab making perfume. Now I got two weeks' detention. Perfume in the chem lab? Yeah, see, it's this little chick, you know, and I've been making perfume for her, and it was a little accident. A little accident? It wasn't much of an explosion, and I cleaned it all up. But I didn't think anybody was around. But somebody told Casey. Maybe Casey saw it happen. No, it wasn't no one there. There's so much thinking going on in this school, man. You gotta wait in line for Casey to get at you. The traffic in and out of his office is rather brisk. Brisk ain't the word for it. It's congested. And when I find out who's responsible for this, I'm gonna pop some think upside his head. Suppose you hit the wrong guy by mistake. Jason. You may find out that revenge is not as sweet as you think it is. Take it easy, okay? nights. See, I got into some trouble and I'm trying to make it up. What kind of trouble? Well, I had to finish my biology project and I'm trying to do a real good job. So I borrowed a microscope from the lab. Oh boy. I was gonna bring it right back. It was stolen from my car. Oh, I, I got a job right away. And only one more week and I'll have all the money to pay it back. Has anybody missed it yet? No. It's kept in a special case. Only advanced students are allowed to use it. Please don't tell Mr. Casey. I've got a scholarship hanging on my grades, Mr. Dixon. I know. One more week. That's it. And believe me, I've learned my lesson. I hope you have. You said you saw the suspect hanging around the hall outside the chemistry lab at the time in question, right? Right. But I was at the end of the hall. Nevertheless, you said he was a male Caucasian about the age of 16, right? Right. And he was wearing a red shirt. Hey, Bernie got a red shirt. Well, so do you, man. Well, I ain't no male Caucasian, brother, or haven't you noticed? Some people will use anything for an alibi. Oh, it wasn't Bernie. This boy had hair like... hair. So what have I got? Never mind, man. We got business to take care of. 
Hey, everybody got it already. What's that, Nicole? Oh, got five noses, three eyes, six hairdos, and two mouths. What about the ears? Oh, I knew I forgot something. Never mind. Hey, dig. Now, this is what it's called our dinner kit. All we do is put the spare parts together till we make up Helen Suspect. Okay, here's copies of our guide. Find them. Good guy. Find them. Find them. played in that basketball game last week. Thanks, man. Hey, uh, you want to get some lunch or something? Oh, man, I got some business to take care. I'll see you later. Hey, Arnie. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great report you did in Miss Johnson's class. Oh, yeah? Thanks. Hey, uh, I was just gonna get some ice cream. Do you want some? Oh, yeah. yeah thanks. Save it, man. I got it. Casey, Mr. Walker. Hey. Casey, what's going on? The traffic between my class and your office is starting to look like a freeway. Well, maybe you ought to keep a closer eye on your class. It's not that easy. You got them coming and going so fast, I may need a revolving door. Um, something I ought to know about. Oh, no. Nothing I can't handle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pete, let's have lunch. I can't. I got something to do. I'll see you later. Okay, but I do want to see your first free period, okay? Okay. Excuse me. Arnie! I want to see you. Casey is strict, yes. Hard-nosed, okay. But I don't know about unfair, Alice. Well, he's unfair to me. Why? Because they're going to have the best disciplined bunch of failing students in this school. He keeps interrupting my classwork, pulling them out of class. Now, that's unfair. Yeah. What's this? Uh, mutton in aspect, I think. How can you tell? Liz McIntyre, some of this happens to be very good food. Yeah, well, which is and which ain't? Alice, is this the first time you substituted in Homac? Well, yes, but I think I'm developing quite a little talent for it. Well, uh, maybe we can have lunch again when you're sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Thank you very much. Arnie, what's the matter? Mr. Casey knows all about the microscope. I'm on probation, and it'll probably go on my record. You're the only one I told. Arnie, I never said a word. I trusted you, Mr. Dixon, and you turned me in. Pete? You just drove past your stop. Don't we have an appointment right now? Oh, yeah, I know, but I gotta go see Casey about something important. Can I meet with you later? You can meet with me later, but um, be a little gentle with him, will you, Pete? He's delicate. Don't worry, I only plan to ask him a few questions. Um, I know about Arnie. Have you tried talking to the kid first? Yeah, but it didn't do any good. Now I want to find out from Casey where he's been getting his information. You think he's going to tell you? I don't know, but I'm sure going to try and find out. Pete, if Casey's out of line, that's my concern. I'll handle it. The trust of those kids is my concern. Pete! I'll handle it. Come on. Let's keep our appointment. Why do I get the feeling that you know everything that goes on in this school? Because I do. Man, if you knew what you was talking about, you wouldn't know what you was talking about. I'm telling you, everybody knows. And I'm telling you, you got the wrong cat. Mr. Dixon don't need to be sneaking around. No. Doesn't everyone say we don't trust anyone over 30? Well, he's a teacher over 30, isn't he? Oh, no. Look, that might sound right, but I can't go for that. Here's Arnie. He'll tell you. Hey, these kids been spreading the word that Mr. Dixon turned you in. Tell him the truth, man. Yeah, he did turn me in. Okay, break it up. Hey, everybody take a seat. Yesterday when the bell rang, we were discussing laws. 
Do you ever think that there's a legitimate reason to disobey a law? Nancy. Didn't you start to say something yesterday? I've been thinking a lot about what we said, and it really connects with what's happening now. It's relevant, you know. Is it? How, Charlie? Thanks, Jason, but I'd like to hear from someone else. John? Emmeline? You know a better way to get the suspicion off yourself? Now that Charlie always wearing dark glasses, what's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Now if you ask me, that Sam is really the one to watch, man. How come? Because he look guilty all the time. Well, maybe he's just scared because you keep following him around all day. Never mind that, man. Let's get set up, OK? OK. Now at the oven vision, the suspects are deployed outside, then what? Then when you set this oven off, man, pow! <laughs> Wait a minute, why do I set it off and off? Because you're the right type. What makes me the right type? Because you're smaller than me. Mm. Anyway, it's about time. Good luck, man. Good luck. Good luck. Hey, Jason. Hey. What are you doing? Will you wait till they get here? They're coming, man. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Oh. Don't you kill him, eh? Oh, oh, look, it's Larry! Boy, is he gonna get in trouble. Let's get out of here. Yeah. That was beautiful, man. I thought you said nothing would happen. Nothing did. The oven's fired. Well, my eyebrows aren't there. Gone. You're right, man. One of them made a beeline for Casey's office. Did you get there in time to see who it was? I sure did, and it wasn't one of your suspects. Hey, Victor. Oh, hi, Jason. Can I get you something? You already did, man. Two weeks detention. What are you talking about? Oh, you know as well as I do, man, what I'm talking about. Oh, what's the matter with you? Don't jive, man. I want to know why. Jason, I'm sorry. I... Man, you're some kind of a weird two-timing dude. Go around buying people everything you see in sight, letting your light shine all over the place. But the first chance you get, you break to the vice principal office and you sell out. And I want to know why you do this, man. Well, Jason, see, I like you, and I wanted you to like me. Ever since I came to school, I've been trying to make friends, but it's hard for me. I'm just not like you. You still haven't answered my question, man. Why'd you think to Casey? Well, I got in trouble, just like you did. Casey said he'd let me off if I'd help him out. I didn't want to do it. He made me do it, Jason. He hired me. Casey hired him? That's what he said. Excuse me. Help, not punishment. Her home life is in a mess. Why don't you let me talk to her? All right, if you want to give it a try, I'll hold off. Is that the last of them? That's it. Casey, I want to talk to you. Well, you seem to be upset, mister. Did you hire Victor O'Brien as an informer? No, I did not. He said you did. Get Victor O'Brien in here, please. Well, you went for it again, didn't you, Dixon? These kids can tell you anything, you'll believe it. You didn't answer my question. Have you been using him as an informer? In a manner of speaking, yes. But I never hired anyone. When a boy comes to me with information, if it'll help keep order in this school, I use it. You may keep order, but what about his character and self-esteem? You don't sit in this office, Pete. I've got a job to do and judgments to make. I've got to worry about kids parking illegally and other kids pushing speed. 
Now, I don't need or care for informers about parking. But if I can save a kid from an overdose of narcotics or, or a pregnant girl from committing suicide, I'll take that kind of information from anyone. Now, would you rather I didn't? I'd rather you found another way. Like what? I don't know, but there's got to be some kind of way to be able to come in. Victor, did I ever hire you or force you to tell me anything? Well, did I? No, Mr. Casey. Satisfied? All right, Victor, you can go now. All right, he lied. But they all don't lie. Some would like to tell the truth if there was an atmosphere of trust which your methods prevent. Dixon, will you never learn? There's a whole world... Stop it! Look, neither of you is going to be convinced. If a life's at stake, sure, you have to do anything to save it. But at the same time, you can't go around turning students against each other. You can't make them live with the suspicion that any and everything they do is going to be reported. Discipline is fine. But not as a tool to destroy trust. Excuse me, but it looks like there's going to be trouble. You better come quick. What's it gonna be? Man, that's what you call touch and go. If anybody touched me, I've been gone. Jason, how come you did that? Something Mr. Dixon said. What? He said you gotta figure out why some people do some things. And I think I figured you out, man. Yeah, well, Jason, I lied to you, too. I know you did. You do? Well, how? I got you all figured out in my head. Yeah, then why wouldn't... It made me feel good, man. See, I'm the cat that really figured out it was you. And I don't want to be responsible for you getting leaned on when I'm not around to watch out for you. Don't know what to say. Yeah, well, I do. You know, those guys are in there, and they're gonna come after us. Can we please go? Thank you very much. <laughs> I just paid off the microscope, $72.90. I'm still on probation, but it's not going on my record. That's great, Arnie. Arnie, do me a favor, will you? From now on, do your biology projects in the lab. You bet. See you. Hey, Arnie. Yeah? Hey, uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, I'm sorry for what I did. If uh, there was any way I could make it up to you, I would. Okay, forget it. Hey, you want to go get something to eat? Come on, I'll buy. That is, uh... Do you want to go get a pizza with me? Yeah. I'm kind of hungry myself. You know, it's been a long day. But it's been a good day. Yeah. I feel better, too. Are you hungry? Now that you mention it, you buying? Who, me? No. What I like about you, Pete, you're so secure. 